Hey you guys, welcome back. We're finishing up our visit to Osawatomie, Kansas. And this town, it was founded in 1854 and it is crammed with history. We have six more sites to visit. So let's not waste any time. Let's go check out the rest of this town. Okay, so this bridge was built in 1932 and it's called a Marsh, Marsh Arch Bridge. So I don't know what that means, but I'm gonna find out. So a Marsh Arch Bridge was designed by James Marsh in 1911, and it's known for its ability to expand and contract with the differing temperatures. He was a bridge builder from Iowa, and there are about 20 bridges that remain, mostly in Iowa and Kansas. And Osawatomie has two. There's one over Pottawatomie Creek, and then there's this one, Creamery Bridge, and that's over the Maurice de Seine River. Wow, I think this would be a great place for a picnic in warmer weather. This is the Osawatomie History Museum and it is crammed packed, crammed packed full of stuff. It's kind of overwhelming. I mean, we could spend all day in here. This could be a three hour video and honestly, I'm not gonna do that to you. There's a lot of Aunt Sally's teacups and Uncle Joe's watches in here and that's okay. That's history. I'm just gonna show you guys a few interesting items like that turret cap. And it was on one of the main building turrets at the state mental hospital. Unfortunately, that building was destroyed in 2002. And we visited one of those old buildings that remain up there in the video about Asylum Bridge. That is a shake machine. It is a 1914 exercise machine. That sucker's over a hundred years old. It's dubbed the fat shaker because you're supposed to put this belt around you and it's supposed to shake the fat off of you. And I got to try it out. Well, it's just shaking something. They had a little display about Harper's Ferry. Now that was John Brown's raid on the arsenal there in October of 1859. His intention was to steal arms and start a rebellion in the South. And 24 men joined Brown and 11 were killed, four escaped and John Brown and seven others were captured. They were found guilty of treason. John Brown was hung on December 2nd, 1859, and the museum here has a copy of his last letter, and it says, Charleston, Virginia, 2nd of December, 1859. I, John Brown, am now quite certain that the crimes of this guilty land will never be purged away, but with blood. I had, as I now think, vainly flattered myself that without very much bloodshed, it might be done. John Brown. The back of this museum is a replica of the 1890 Missouri Pacific Passenger Depot. But more importantly, they have a caboose outside that we get to go in. This is caboose 942, and it is the last surviving horizontal wood sheath caboose in the Missouri Pacific Line. And it started its life in 1919 as a boxcar before it was turned into a caboose in the 1920s. And this has been restored to how it would have looked in the 1940s. And cabooses had many uses. The crew would have slept here on very long hauls and it was their home away from home. And they had to cook their food. Now I've heard of cowboy coffee where you just throw the grounds in water and boil them, but this is caboose coffee. You put the grounds in your kettle and you soak them overnight. And then in the morning when you wake up, you heat it up and you're good to go. This caboose is a cupola caboose and it's the most common type. And the back would have served as the conductor's office and the exit to the back of the train. Now a main use of the caboose was for the observation of problems at the end of the train, at the rear of the train, before they caused any trouble. And also to be able to get out and switch tracks. And yes, I'm going to climb up there in that sucker. And you don't see cabooses anymore because technology has replaced a lot of the tasks that the 
crew used to perform. In the 1980s, they started passing laws that did not require cabooses. And that's really too bad because that used to be a treat if you got stuck by a train seeing that caboose. This is the Mills House, and it's a Queen Anne that was built in 1902 by oilman William R. Mills, and his company supplied gas to the town of Osawatomie, Paola, and Spring Hill, so he was a very wealthy man. This home cost $49,000 to build, and it has 7,000 square feet, nine fireplaces, elaborate woodwork, and ornamental ceilings, and it's now owned by former state senator Doug Walker, and it's listed on the National Register of Historic Places. But what I find interesting about this house is the stone facade. I don't know if that's rare or not, but it sure is pretty. This is Soldier's Monument, and this was erected to honor the five men that were killed in the Battle of Osawatomie on August 30th, 1856. And the inscription on this side is in commemoration of the heroism of Captain John Brown, who commanded at the Battle of Osawatomie August 30th, 1856, who died and conquered American slavery on the scaffold at Charleston, Virginia, December 2nd, 1859. And on this side, this is Frederick Brown, son of Captain John Brown, born December 21st, 1830. And on this side, we have David R. Garrison, born December 14th, 1826, and George W. Partridge, born December 22nd, 1827. This one is Theron Parker Powers, born October 1st, 1832, and Charlie Kieser, or Kaiser, and it doesn't have a date of birth. This is the Old Stone Church, and it was built in 1861, and the first reverend and one of the founders was Samuel Adair, and he was the brother-in-law of John Brown, and he was married to John Brown's half-sister, Florella, and he came to Kansas in 1854 as a missionary. He used to hold services in his cabin, and that was before that they built this church. And we have visited that cabin, and it's uh, pretty cool. It's uh, very well preserved. Hey, if you guys are enjoying this video and learning something, go ahead and give me a thumbs up because it really does help my little bitty channel. We are on our last stop here, and this is how you come in to Osawatomie. And there's this big sign that says John Brown Country, and they're very proud of it because this is John Brown Country. But it is also the end of the Trail of Death for the Potawatomi Indians, and that was their forced removal from Indiana, and that deserves its very own video because right now what we're actually looking for is this land office that was built in 1854 and this sign says that it is now a tourist information center that's open in the summer and i hope that they do some repair work on this and do open it up during the summer because i will be back and uh, it needs to be preserved because if you watched the battle of osawatomi video you might remember that after the battle, the Missouri militia came and destroyed the town of Oswatomi, except for like three to five buildings, and this is one of them, and so it needs to be preserved. Now, this was a land office. This is where you would come when they opened up the territory. This is where you would come, stake your claim, or buy your land. Actually, this building doesn't look too bad. I'm just hoping that it's just that facade. No trip is complete for me unless I see a train, and I got to see a train really up close. Thank you guys for sticking around until the end, and I hope that you enjoyed our trip to Osawatomie. I appreciate each and every one of you, and I will see you guys next Thursday. Bye now.